same sheet of padding one yeah. year going to year UK? to the bar. Uh, no. <laughs> Do you have a motive? Yeah. 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 Do you have a motive? No. Mom's getting her famous pumpkin bars out of the oven. Well, you know, we took home act together. I always burnt my chocolate chip cookies, but she always made it look so easy. I wouldn't have passed that class if it hadn't been for your mama. That sounds just like mom, ornerier than ever. <laughs> She's always been that way, girl. Hi, Caroline. What are you fixing good? Mm, that sounds good. Anybody help me? I was hoping we'd get to see this little guy today, but I guess he's comfy where he is for a few more days, huh? One week exactly, but I wish he was already here. I feel like I've been pregnant for two years. I remember thinking Addison was never going to get here. She's going to be 14 in March. Are you and Ross still thinking about adopting a child? We talked about it briefly when I found out I couldn't have any more kids, but Ross just has so much going on with work right now. We've fostered a few kids before, but we've never really looked into adopting one. I would really like to have another kid, maybe a boy this time. Well, one's enough for me. He definitely keeps me on my toes. We're not usually here on Thanksgiving, but we decided to stay home and have everybody here. Well, I was glad you did. I didn't have anything to do. Wait a minute. This is work. I better take it. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. This is Shay Stevenson. How old is he? Does he have any relatives? That always makes these things interesting. You know, we can't force them to take them just because of relatives. Well, I'll come by there in just a little bit and get him and get that paperwork started as soon as possible. It'll be a bit, but I'll be right on my way. Okay, then. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Jay, can I steal you away for a second? Hey, Jay, I just got an emergency call, and I'm going to have to leave shortly. Oh, no. I hope everything's okay. Well, I don't have any details right now, but there's been an accident, and the only survivor is an eight-year-old boy. I know you and Ross haven't been doing much fostering, but I felt like I needed to say something about this. This is so crazy. I was just inside talking to the girls about how we used to foster. I'd have to talk to Ross and Addison about it, but... I think it's something I'd like to do. Well, that would be great because I just hate it when things like this occur during the holidays. It's just so difficult. Tell your mama I'm sorry I had to sneak off. And those pumpkin bars look delicious. Mason, Mason, we're here. Are you ready to go in? Jay, it's nice to see you again. And hey, Mason, welcome to our home. Come on in, guys. Come on, let's get you out of the cold. 
My name's Jocelyn, and this is my husband, Ross. Our daughter, Addison's around here somewhere. I've known Jocelyn since she was a baby. They're good people. I know it's gonna take a little getting used to, but I think you're really gonna like it here. Mason, she told us you like sports. We've got a big backyard with lots of room to play baseball or throw a football around. Speaking of sports, Mason, you wanna go see your new room? We've decorated it with all kinds of sports stuff. Sure. Kind of warm yeah. in here. You want to take the coat off? So, how's the little guy doing? All things considered, of course. He's a good kid. He's just having a hard time dealing with it right now. Nowadays, the cabinet for families and children, we see a lot of cases where the parents are abusive or the children are neglected. And it's just not the case with Mason. His mom and dad, they were loving and caring and so involved in his life. It's those kind of situations that just tear me up. There's no explanation to why this happened, and no one knows that better than Mason. This is for you. We didn't know what your favorite sport was, so we got a few different things. I like softball, but I haven't played in a while. Maybe we can play sometime. Our daughter, Addison, is on the dance team at school, so we go to basketball games to watch her dance routines. So what's your favorite sport? Soccer. He's just going to need someone to love and guide him through this difficult time. Nobody could do any better than you and Jocelyn. Thanks for choosing to take Mason in. Oh, let me get this. I'm going to have to leave, but tell Jay I'll check with you guys tomorrow and see how things are going. Okay. See you later. Hello? This is Jay. How was school today? It was all right. I have a science project to work on. Well, I'll help you with it later if you'd like. Yeah. Mason, can I ask you something? Do you like it here? I mean, do you like living with us? It's nice here. It's just, I miss my mom and dad. Sweetheart, I know. It's hard to understand things like this. I just want you to know that it's okay to talk about how you feel. I think about it a lot. The accident. I mean, I see it sometimes when I close my eyes. Like it's all happening again. And it scares me a little. Do you want to tell me what happened? We were on our way home from the park. My dad was telling me a story about something. 
And then I saw this car out of the corner of my eye. When I woke up, I called out for my mom, but she didn't answer. Some man was looking in the window to see if we were okay. He got me out of the car because it started smoking. The firefighters showed up and they tried to rescue them. But it was too late. Shay told us a little bit about what happened, but I'm glad you told me though. And any time you want to talk about anything, you can come talk to me. Mason, is it okay if I pray for you? What's that? Praying is just talking to God. It's when we ask God to do something for us that we can't do for ourselves. Okay. Lord, I pray that you give Mason peace and help him to know you in a real way. You are love and joy, and our hope is in you, God. I know that you have great things planned for Mason, and I pray that you show him those things and show him your great love. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you playing games on that? No, I'm reading my Bible. I have it downloaded on here. It's my favorite book. I see you reading a lot. What's it about? There are lots of stories in here that God wants us to know about. But the best one is about a man named Jesus. Have you ever heard that one? Well, let me tell you about him. You see, a long time ago... Jesus, Jocelyn says you hear us when we pray. I don't really know what to say, but I want to thank you for letting me live with the Harpers. I really want Addie, Jocelyn, and Ross to like me. I like living here, and I like the Harpers. Amen. Bye, Dad. See you tomorrow night. Bye, sweetie. Practice today was rough. Are you going to be able to make it this week? Because we really need to work that routine. I hope so. Everything seems to revolve around Mason right now. <laughs> it's getting really old if you ask me. Addie, quit being so mean. He's just a little kid. Your mom's trying to help. What would you do if you lost your family? He's kind of alone, you know. Sarah Beth, hold up.
Addie, are you okay? Mom, I was wrong about everything. At first, he seemed like he didn't even want to be here, and I didn't really want him here. But now, I don't know. Sarah Beth said I should give him a chance. I heard him praying the other day. He was praying for me, you, and Dad. I think he really needs this mom, and I was so wrong about him. Not that it's right to eavesdrop, honey, but I'm glad you overheard him praying for us, because I think you're right. He does need our help. He doesn't understand why his world has been turned upside down. He needs to know that there's somebody there that's going to help him through this. I guess I didn't really think about it like that. And I'm sorry for being such a brat lately. Mom, do you think we will be able to help him? I really hope so. We're going to do all that we can. I know God is a faithful God who hears our prayers. And the prayers of a little boy who needs a family. Now... How about you go inside and get out of those school clothes and go out back and help your daddy rake leaves? Okay. But then can we go out and get some ice cream? We'll see. So, uh, your mom tells me there's a boy you've been talking to. Addison? A Addie? Mason? You want to go out and play? You can go on out. Just put your jacket on first. Did you enjoy the chicken casserole tonight? I got the recipe from Mom. Have you ever known me not to like chicken casserole? Good point. Oh, and uh, Shay called while you were helping Addison. She said it wasn't urgent, so I told her you'd call her back. I'll give her a call first thing in the morning. And that reminds me, I want to talk to you about Mason. I really think we need to consider what else we can do for him. I understand what you're saying, but Mason isn't just some stray puppy you're asking to keep. He's a little boy who's been through a tough and tragic thing. We have fostered other children before, but he's different. Something in me says that he needs to see some light in the darkness. I know it's a big leap of faith to consider bringing him into our family, but we have an opportunity to change Mason's life for the better. I just don't want us to back away from this just because it may be difficult. We can't help what happened to him. And I'd like to think we've shown him some light with everything that we've already done for him. I mean, it's not like he's living in an orphanage somewhere. We've given him a nice place to stay, new clothes, three meals a day, and we're giving him somewhere to live until he can find a nice home. Okay, look, I care about him too, and I do want to see things turn around for Mason. I just don't know what my part in all that is. How do I just become a father to this little boy? Mothers are different. You have that whole nurturing thing. I have to build up his trust and try to become everything he wants his father to be. And that's a big step. I just don't know. I know it is. I know it's a huge step. I'm just asking that we pray about it. I'm asking that we give him a chance. I'm going to talk to Shay tomorrow and see what the next step is. But I want to hear from you if that's okay. Lord, your 
word says that you are a father to the fatherless and that it is you who places the lonely in families. God, we trust you to guide us in what should be done for Mason. Show us our part in all this and bring healing to this little boy who needs you so desperately. In Jesus' name, amen. How do moms do that anyway? Do what? That whole make everything better thing. My mom could do it too. It's just the mom thing. All rise. Please be seated. Call the case of Mason Alexander. We're here today for a temporary custody hearing. Are all the parties present and ready to go forward? Yes, yes Your, Your Honor. Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Is the social worker present? Yes, Your Honor. We're here today because uh, initially this child was unable to be taken care of due to a tragic accident involving his parents. I believe there was contact attempted with the uncle by the cabinet for families and children. However, the uncle was non-responsive and at that point in time, the cabinet placed the child with a foster family. Uh, we're here today for a temporary custody hearing. The uncle is now present, and my understanding, the parties are prepared to go forward. Yes, Your Honor, you're correct. To start the hearing, uh, I'd like to hear from the uncle. Mr. Alexander, will you tell me a little bit about your relationship with Mason? I love him. He's my brother's son. I've tried to visit as much as possible, but me and my brother live four hours apart, so I've been around him as much as I could. But I love Mason, and I'm his only family now. It, it just makes sense that he would live with me. Do you have any other children that reside with you currently? No, I don't have any children. Mr. Alexander, it's my understanding that the Cabinet for Families and Children tried to make initial contact with you upon learning of the death of your brother and his wife. Um, I've been told that for whatever reason you would not respond to them and for that reason uh, I had no choice but to place the child in foster care. Is that correct? I didn't have time to get back to them but but I meant to. Uh, in considering your application for custody in this case I've reviewed your record and it appears that on at least one if not two occasions you've been previously ordered to attend and complete anger management. Um, how has that gone? That's all in my past now, and you're saying it based on my past that my own flesh and blood can go live with a stranger, a complete stranger? I don't believe this. Uh, I see you're in a uniform today. Um, how can you provide financially for the child in, in this case? Is this really a question in this case? I mean, his parents had life insurance, so he's going to be taken care of. Mr. Alexander, the money the child receives is in trust. Do you not understand that? The only way it gets spent is with my approval, approval of this court. I'd like to ask the Harpers a few questions. Now, have you fostered children in the past? Yes, Your Honor. We have one child, but I'm not able to have any more, so we've talked about adoption. We've felt a strong connection with Mason from the time that he came to us. We know his world was turned upside down and we just want to be there for him. So what are you saying? What, I haven't been there for him? Well, you make it like I can't provide for him, like I can't love him. He's my family. He should be with me. Mr. Alexander, you are in a courtroom. You will conduct yourself appropriately or I'll have you removed. At this time, uh, Mason, if you will come with me, we'll go in the back and uh, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Mason, um, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Now that you've been staying at the Harbors for a couple of weeks, 
Uh, how are things going there? Do you like it there? It's nice. Mason, what kind of uh, things do you do at the Harper's house? Addison plays with me sometimes, and we play soccer in the backyard. Do you enjoy being with Jocelyn and Ross, the Harpers? Jocelyn tells me stuff in the Bible. She's always reading it. And Ross, he's kind of funny. Can you tell me a little bit about your Uncle Corey? I don't really know him. My dad didn't get along with him, so he didn't come around much. Mason, is there anything else that you want to tell me about, either the Harpers or about your uncle? It's really hard without my mom and dad, but the Harpers are taking care of me. Mason, I want to thank you for talking with me. Let's go in there and wrap this up, okay? After hearing all the testimony, considering all of the relevant facts in this case, I think it is my determination that Mason be placed with the Cabinet for Families and Children and that the Cabinet place him with the Harpers in foster care. It is my true desire that the Harpers will seriously consider adoption so that we can have a more permanent resolution. If anybody wants to appeal this decision, my written findings will be filed within three days. This basement has turned out really great. I didn't know about these colors at first, but I like how warm it is. And the tree looks good down here too. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I'm real happy with how everything turned out down here. I was originally wanting to do this whole man cave kind of thing, but wasn't really sure with how you felt about that, so. Anyway, how do you feel about today? I mean, Mason's uncle is quite a character. And I am glad for Mason's sake that the judge did rule in our favor. I really didn't mean to offend him today by what I said, but his true color shined through when I told him we wanted Mason properly cared for. I hate thinking of how many children are in this world without loving families, without someone to help them and teach them good things. Mason didn't even know what prayer was before he came here. Not that his parents weren't doing the best that they could, but they probably didn't know about it either. Look, we both know I've been a little unsure about things concerning Mason lately. But after today, I don't know. Something just feels different. I mean, he's a great kid. He's smart, he's well behaved, and he's kind of won me over without me even realizing it. I mean, today in the courtroom, he was drawing a picture of him and our family. And something just kind of hit me like a bolt of lightning. I want him to be a part of our family, Joss. And not just temporarily. I want him to be our son. I was reading Psalm 68 the other day. It says he puts the lonely in families and is a father to the fatherless. And I know if we don't help Mason, God can still do something great in his life. And I want to be a part of that, whatever it is. I am so proud of you. And I'm excited about the future. Maybe even after Christmas we'll talk more about this man cave idea. <laughs> Jocelyn, have you seen my winter jacket? Addie said she'd play kickball with me this morning, but I can't find my jacket. I think I hung it in the closet by the front door. Oh, okay. I haven't checked there yet. So, are you ready for Christmas? Every time I look, there are more and more presents underneath the tree. Maybe we'll even have some snow this year, too. I love to play in the snow. Yeah, I guess I'm ready. There's just one thing I wish I could do for Christmas, but I don't think I'll get to. Well, what is it? Maybe I can help. It's sort of strange, but I wish I could say something to my mom and dad. 
That's not strange. I think I understand what you mean. And I may even have an idea how to make that Christmas wish come true. But we don't have to do anything unless you're comfortable with it. How about we go get your coat and I'll explain my idea to you. Mason, honey, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, it's okay. I never got to before, but I think I'm ready now. Okay, you go on up, and I'll be right up if you need me. Mom, Dad, I miss you so much. I was scared for a little while, but now I know that things are going to be okay. The Harpers have been taking care of me. And they've taught me that God is going to take care of me too. I love you, Mom and Dad. Mason, it's like 5.30 in the morning. Can't we sleep in for a few more hours? Addie! Addison! Come on! Alright, clearly you're not going back to sleep now. Let's go. I'll put on a pot of coffee and be it. Here, Mason. This one's for Mom. And this one, it's for you. That one's from Ross. I think you'll like it. Smile, Eddie. Oh, look! Shay's calling. I better go answer this. Here, go ahead. Hello? Oh, hey, Merry Christmas to you too, Shay. Oh, Mason and Addie were up early wanting to open Christmas presents anyway. Really? I can't believe this is actually happening. I mean, doesn't this usually take a while? Wow, this is great news. Hey, can I call you back in just a bit so I can let everyone else know what's going on? Okay, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. Shay said that Mason's case is being determined within the next few weeks for permanent placement. There's still a lot of paperwork and all that to be done, but the judge ruled Mason's uncle unfit and that he be placed in our care permanently. Shay said it's off the record, but it looks like Mason's going to be staying with us. Why don't you come on over here, buddy? We've got a present especially for you.
Can you read some of this to me? Sure. I know just the story. It kind of reminds me of how you came to be part of our family, Mason, and God's plan to make us part of His. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David's Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign.